Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. First off, thanks for visiting my channel and I appreciate you watching this video. If you would, it helps me a great deal if you'd hit the like button before you leave. Um, but also, if you find this useful and you'd like to get more content like this, uh, you might want to consider su subscribing to my channel. Um, it's growing. I'm putting up two to three videos per week, uh, usually tutorials, and I'm getting a lot of good feedback from them. So. With that said, uh, today's project, I think I'm going to do uh, a little pendant, and I'm not sure what to call it, maybe a bubbles pendant, because it looks like a circle with a bunch of little circles inside of it, one of which has a faceted stone uh, set into a bezel. Uh, so I guess we'll call it a bubbles pendant. All right, so I picked out a, a pretty Swiss blue topaz, I think it's six or seven millimeters probably. Um, and we'll use that for our stone. And I'm going to start with some 3 16 inch uh, plain uh, fine silver bezel strip, which is what I use for most things. And uh, I considered using a little bit deeper stuff uh, for this because it's a relatively deep stone, but when I look at it, it's, it's going to be, I got enough to work with so that I won't have any uh, the point of the stone sticking out the bottom, so I think we'll be good there. So, um, we're going to use some 14 gauge round wire for the outer part of the, the big bubble, and then uh, I'll use some 18 gauge wire for the smaller bubbles inside of it uh, that go along with the bezel, which will be one of the bubbles, except it'll have a stone in it. Um, Let's see, I probably for the bale, I'll probably do my uh, standard bale, uh, which requires a little bit of 26 gauge sheet, probably enough there, and um, some 22 gauge sterling silver wire. And that will be what we need. So, first off, I'm going to make myself uh, a step bezel here. I wasn't initially going to do a video this weekend, but uh, I was supposed to do a show up in Estes Park. However, the person I uh, split a booth with usually, her horse was injured, so she had to back out, and I just couldn't really do it on my own. So. So you get a video this weekend instead. Kind of not sorry that I didn't have to do that show this weekend. As I've gotten older, uh, doing shows gets more and more tiring. It's a lot of work. Uh, and this late in the year, when you're doing an outdoor show, the weather is always a, an iffy kind of situation. snug than too loose. Okay, I think that's going to be pretty. Personally more a fan of the London blue topaz. Which 
is a little bit darker. I think the Swiss blue looks a little bit fakey sometimes. <laughs> but interesting thing about uh, blue topaz is most of the blue topaz on the market has been heat and radi and heat treated and then irradiated to make the color change that occurs when they, they heat treat it permanent. It's rare to find naturally blue topaz on the market. Okay. So I'm going to cut myself a little 18 gauge wire here. And I'm thinking, I usually, to do these kind of step bezels, I uh, put jump rings inside, stack them one on top of the other. And I think for this one, I may need to do three uh, in order to lift it up high enough to where the pavilion doesn't stick out through the bottom of the bezel, which is not ideal. So let's start by smoothing the end out a little bit. So let's cut that off. Close. On these ones, I'd rather cut them off a little bit too big and then snip off little pieces until they fit tightly in there than to cut them too short and have to start over. You can use a, a round nose pliers or a jump ring mandrel or whatever, whatever you need to to make these into little rings, but I usually just shape them by hand. That's not required. Oops, still a little too big. Got one. Let's do another one and then I'll take a look at it and decide if I need to do a third one. There's multiple ways to do step bezels. You could also uh, solder a second piece of bezel at a slightly different level so that it creates a lip. Yeah, I'll do that sometime for a video to show people how to do that. I think this is an easier way though. Never get it right on the first go around. Sometimes getting them sitting on top of each other in the bezel is challenging. <clears throat> okay. I think two is actually going to be good. So let's just go with two. The point isn't sticking out the bottom, so I'll just need to file the top of the bezel down to the correct level. So, One of the key parts about doing these kind is making sure that those rings are sitting flat in there. Because if you don't, you'll get a crooked uh, surface for your stone to sit on and then it's hard to get it to set nicely when you go to set the stone. I'm uh, repeating some stuff if you've watched some of my other videos, but if you're a first time viewer, it should be useful. Easy way to solder these rings in is to flux it, set it on top of a couple of pieces of solder, and then just heat the outside. It'll just suck it right up. Uh, it just wicks it right up. It's, it's, it's kind of slick.
make sure you guys can see what's going on here. So I'm going to use more solder than I probably need. But I'd rather have too much than not enough. Because I really want it to I really solder goes in really well with some overflow. Look how it's kind of okay, the reason I use a lot is because I'm going to file this bottom flat and I was using a round piece of wire to create the little platform and so I need to have pretty good uh, solid solder and silver mix there on the bottom in order to get a flat surface. flat shiny surface now. Alright, so I have to decide how big I want this pendant to be. And so I'm going to cut myself a little. I think I want it to be about, you know, based on the size of this, maybe about an inch and a half across ish. So if I use the uh, pi times diameter equals circumference, I can get a rough estimate. I'll just round pi down to three. So about three times that. There. About there. And that'll get us pretty close. Let's try it and see what happens. See if my 30 old memory of geometry is still valid. I'm just going to bring these guys together here. Yeah, that's going to be a good size. Well, let's make sure it's sitting flat. I don't want it to be too wavy. some of that leftover 18 gauge. I was going to make some or maybe two or three different sizes of rings. Just jump rings. So I'll wrap it around a file handle here. Make a few this size. find something else round I can wrap things around. Okay, so I found uh, a couple of things that are round that I can use to wrap this around. 
I like to keep a lot of various cylindrical things around just to make jump rings on them. Um, it's easier to get consistent ones if you have a, you know, an actual uh, thing that's all one diameter. So let's make a few of this size. of 18. Do one around this little thicker piece. I don't really have a plan here other than to put a random assortment of rings along with the stone inside of here. I don't know exactly the configuration I'm going to have. I may have to make something smaller than these two. So I'm thinking if I'm figuring this is going to be the top of the pendant, I don't usually like to put the stone in the center. I have a problem with, I like to do symmetrical things, so I have to kind of force myself to not do that so much. I do think I need smaller ones too. Maybe I'll wrap some around a piece of 14 gauge round or something. Well, look at that. There's a piece of 14 gauge round sitting right there. problem is that when I'm arranging stuff like this, I usually find out something I like, and then when I go to transfer it to the soldering surface, I don't get it exactly the same way. So I usually tell people to use their phone to take a picture of what it looks like, and I'm not going to do that today because I'm using my phone to film. <laughs> so I'm just going to do the best I can. And this, you can configure these however you want. It's not real. formula here. Cool thing is when you have repeating shapes like this, it's almost it's hard to make something that comes out unattractive. At least from my perspective. One thing you might note is that my Ken here where I have a, a point where this ring is split there and I try to put those splits right where I'm going to have to solder it somewhere else anyway so that I'll get a kind of a free solder if that makes sense I don't have to go back and individually fix those splits so just soldering them, soldering them in will just take care of it that's not exactly what I had but that's alright I kind of like it like that. I think I'm going to do it like that. All right, so cut myself some solder here. I'm going to use pretty small pieces this time. Start by soldering a bezel on. Just work my way around. Okay, I got them all. I got them all. All 
All right. So let's use one of these other rings, or a ring at the top, to run our bale through. for it. Some 26 gauge sterling. Let's cut a little piece out of this. I'm not going to make a huge bale for this one. like a more complete uh, explanation of how I'm doing these little bales, I have a video that you can check out up there. If I remember to put the little link there, okay, this is um, 22 gauge sterling silver wire. Got a couple of pieces of this. few of those little pieces of solder here still, but I need to cut a couple more. Okay, just need to snip this off here. I recommend you get them. They're super handy for various things. They're called um, bale making pliers and strangely enough I'm making a bale with them. still have a little bit of solder on the pad, so I'm just going to pick solder this closed right here on the back of that little bale that I just made. And then, I'm going to let this guy sit in the pickle for a bit. And then I will clean it up with the Dremel. Got any any boo-boos I made. And then I'll set the stone and polish it. I'll show you the final result. So it's pickle time.
Okay, let it pickle for a while there. And I did a little um, pre-polishing with the Dremel and I filed this down a little bit so that it's closer to where I need it to be as far as the depth to set the stone. <clears throat> so now it's just a mostly a matter of getting it sitting in there straight. Maybe taking a little bit off here and there. sitting straight. Whenever um, bezels set a faceted stone, you have a tendency to tip back and forth like that when you're setting them. So I usually try to put some pressure on either side, straight across from each other, and then go about 90 degrees. And push it down a little bit on both sides. And then start filling in the middle areas without using a huge amount of pressure at first. If you push too hard while it's not in there very securely, then you can force it up. since I changed the camera from straight above I keep drifting out of, uh, out of the view of the lens so I apologize for that a little burnishing here Let me go polish this and then I will bring it back and show you the final result. Okay. There's my little blue topaz bubble pendant. So, hope you enjoyed that. I'll get a better picture and put it at the end. All right, well that was the bubbles pendant video. Uh, probably make a pair of earrings to match those ones. Um, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. Feel free to share it with others. And I love having comments and su suggestions in the comment section down below. Um, before you leave, uh, check out another video and maybe subscribe. So uh, thanks for watching. Happy silversmithing. Take care.